everyone so today I wanted to update my hedgehog supplies list video um not much has changed since I made that video except for that video is really boring because all you're doing is looking at a table full of supplies because I wasn't comfortable enough to get in front of the camera back then uh so let's let's bring it to 2017 shall we um Neither of the hedgehogs are going to be in this video right now because I'm filming during the day and they are both asleep. Um, so let's, let's just hop right into it. I'm going to talk about the number one thing you need for a hedgehog and I'm telling you, it, you need this for every pet and that's a vet fund. The cat is knocking into the tripod, sorry about that. And the number one thing you need, uh, really for any pet, but especially for hedgehogs, is a vet fund. Hedgehogs are exotic animals, which means they have to go to exotic vets. My last vet trip cost us $100 and nothing was wrong with my hedgehog. <laughs> That's a story for another day. Um, but yeah, hedgehogs are expensive to take to the vet. Uh, and realistically, $100 for one trip was fairly cheap. Uh, our old vet was $150 for just a checkup. So you need a vet fund. You need you need, you need a vet fund. If you don't have money for the vet, you shouldn't get the pet. The next thing you need is a cage. Now the care standards for hedgehogs, for their cages, they need to be a minimum of four square feet. Now sometimes it's easier to think of that in square inches because a lot of cages are measured in inches. So that is uh, 564 square inches, I do believe. If I'm wrong, I'll put it right here. Um, now, the easiest, the reason it can be easier to think of it in square inches because they're measured in inches is because the way you find the square footage or this, those square inches is just by multiplying the length times the width. That number you get when you multiply those two is the square inches. So you can always convert that over to square feet and make sure it hits four, or you can just make sure that you're hitting 564 square inches. Sorry if that's a crummy explanation because I am not positive on that number. But think 600. As for the cage itself, the bottom needs to be absolutely solid. None of those wire base bottom thingies. None of that. Has to be a solid base. I wonder how loud this storm is for you guys. Probably pretty loud, huh? As for the type of cage you're going to need, that's sort of up to you. Tanks are definitely not recommended. Uh, if you're going to go for a tank, you're really going to need a big one. Um, so, I, I would just set the idea of tanks aside. They can hold a lot of moisture. They're just not a great option for hedgehogs, to be perfectly honest. I know a fair few people do decide to use them. I'm just going to tell you guys right now, they're not something I recommend on my channel. You can make your personal decision there. As for my... The cat is getting into the cat food. Hold on. Oh, he ran away. He knew he was in trouble. Mm. As for cages I do recommend, one of the best starter cages that I recommend is a bin cage. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One is it's a really affordable cage. Two, there's no chances of climbing and breaking limbs. Three, they are so easy to heat. And with how important heating is for hedgehogs, which I will get into in a second, but if you guys have been on my channel for a while, you know I have like 12 heating videos. Uh, actually like two, that was a bit dramatic. Um, but no, with how important heating is, having something that is easy to heat, especially when you're new to hedgehogs, is a great thing. That's why I really recommend it as a starter cage or a final cage. Like, you can have bin cages forever. They're really, they're really a great option for hedgehogs. And some don't even need them modified because they really can't climb them. They're not as creative as, um, say, like hamsters are. So yeah, that's that's one of my most recommended cages, particularly for first time owners, because you're not fully comfortable with heating yet at that point. Um, at least most of you won't be. I know some people that own reptiles would probably be comfortable with it just fine, but like, 
for most first time hedgehog owners, heating is going to be a new thing for you and a bin cage will help simplify that immensely. Obviously, I have wire cages. My hedgehogs are in the same kind of cages that you see behind me, um, which are critter nations. Now wire cages, I don't often personally recommend as a starter cage or to first time owners in general because wire cages can be an issue for many reasons. One, because they hold no heat. Uh, I have heat lamps obviously, which I have a video on that I will link down below for you guys. And um, my heat lamps basically just heat the spot they're directly over. They, they provide a bit of a hot spot, which means this pet room stays pretty warm already. If I was to use that as a sole heating device within a cold room, it wouldn't stay heated. It just wouldn't. There's no insulation in a wire cage. It doesn't matter if you get a Critter Nation like I have or something else. The next big issue with wire cages is that some hedgehogs climb. Now unfortunately hedgehogs are not designed to climb, which means they really shouldn't be allowed to. Um, so if you get a wire cage, the chances of you having to modify it are pretty high. Um, Obviously my hedgehogs don't climb, which is why I was comfortable with getting them in a Critter Nation. Um, I used to have it modified with Coroplast around the sides, which was really nice. Um, I don't anymore because I know they don't climb, but uh, if you want a wire cage and you want to put the effort into modifying it, that's up to you, but I'm just, I'm just letting you know that wire cages come with issues. And then of course in the US, vivariums are not an option really. Um, but they are an option in the UK. In fact, they are the most recommended option in the UK. So if you happen to live somewhere um, within the UK or anywhere else that has vivariums as a nice option, then there you go. Um, but it's essentially, you really want smooth bottom and you want something that's gonna work well where you live. If you're in a cold climate, I'd really recommend a bin cage. If you are in, uh, a hot climate but you turn your AC up down really low up down really low if you turn your AC down really low I'm gonna recommend a bin cage if you live in a warm climate and you keep your house warm maybe a wire cage would be an option as long as your hedgehog isn't a climber so some things to keep in mind the main thing is size four square feet so since I mentioned heating Let's just jump into that. Hedgehogs need to stay between 72 degrees and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I will put the Celsius on the screen somewhere because I think it's like 22 to 27 C, but I'm not positive. Uh, <laughs> so hedgehogs need to stay pretty toasty. And the reason for that is they are not good at hibernating. That sounds kind of funny, but basically their bodies, when they get too cold, they attempt to hibernate. Your average pet hedgehog cannot survive hibernation, which is why they cannot get cold. They do not store up enough fat to survive the process. And unfortunately, once they begin the process, it can be tricky to pull them out of it if they're in it too long. So hedgehogs need to stay warm at least African pygmy hedgehogs. So to prevent this from happening and to prevent you from losing your hedgehog to a hibernation attempt, you really need to keep them warm. It's incredibly important because if they decide to hibernate and it is left too long, it is lethal to most hedgehogs. Heating is really important. You can use a space heater or you can use a CHE and I will provide the link to my heating video down below so you can learn more about that. So obviously one important thing about caging is what they're going to be standing on because they can't just stand on their cage base. There are loads of things that you can use for hedgehogs as long as it is not cedar based bedding or um, if they're going to have pine it needs to be kiln dried. I personally don't really like pine bedding. Um, I like the pelleted pine, but the, the bedding that you decide to go with needs to also be unscented. I know some paper-based beddings come with scents now, which is crazy to me. Um, so yes, you can also use fleece, which is what I use. I have a whole video about how I wash and clean it and all of that fun stuff. Uh, it'll be in the description as well. And um, fleece is a great option because there are no chances of mites. There are no chances of ingesting the bedding. There are no chances of it getting stuck in a penile sheath, which happens a fair bit with boys. Um, 
So yeah, fleece is a great option if you're interested in it. Bedding is also a great option if you're interested in that. Totally up to you. And if you're gonna be using fabric liners, fleece is the most recommended. They can use flannel occasionally, which is sometimes nice for the summer uh, if it gets real hot in your house. But if the issue with flannel is you'll have to buy or sew actual liners. You can't just fold it to fit in the cage like you can with fleece because flannel frays. And you don't want anything wrapping around your little guy's paws. What is this piece of hair? It's just like one piece of very odd hair. My hair is so frizzy from not being cut in forever. Oh my god. So one of the next most important things in a hedgehog's cage is a wheel. Their wheel, because they're nocturnal, is going to be their main source of entertainment because you're going to be asleep and exercise because no matter how many times you get them out, they need to be able to run while they're actively awake. So, a wheel is incredibly important. They should have one by the time you bring them home. Um, whether that be when they're babies or as adults. The important thing to note about hedgehog wheels is that they need to be solid. No wire wheels, none ever. They are so bad for hedgehog's feet. Another really important thing to note is that things like woden wheels that have closed off holes, those aren't recommended either. Uh, hedgehogs are nearly blind and <laughs> they have been known, I shouldn't laugh, it's, it's, it's not good. They have been known to go wheeling and then try and get out and kind of clonk themselves in the head. It's very sad. I thoroughly recommend the Carolina Storm bucket wheel, not the express wheel that people use for hamsters. The bucket wheel needs to have a wider running surface. Um, I thoroughly recommend that. I love that wheel. Both of my boys have it. I will link that down below as well. If you're not interested in using a bucket wheel, sorry, someone is in the bathroom washing their hands, it sounds like. Um, <laughs> but if you are not interested in using a bucket wheel and you want to pick up something in store, a comfort wheel is the most recommended pet store wheel. You need the 12 inch one. It's very, very, very loud. I will tell you that right now. So if your hedgehog sleeps in your bedroom, you're probably going to want to set aside, set aside a couple extra coins for the Carolina Storm because the comfort wheel is so loud. You can also use a flying saucer wheel. Again, the 12 inch one. That's what I have for Finn, my Tenric, because that's his preferred way to run, I guess. But I will tell you right now that your average hedgehog will break a flying saucer over time because... Flying saucers, despite the fact that they're marketed for chinchillas, are not designed to hold heavy things for whatever reason. They are incredibly flimsy, and so when your hedgehog, who could possibly be like 500 grams, like my boys, is running on it, it's not designed to withstand that kind of abuse. So what ends up happening with flying saucers is they break pretty quickly. Uh, I haven't had any problems with it with Finn, but obviously Finn is only 150 grams, so compare that to your average hedgehog and you can see the issue. But flying saucers are actually a little bit more quiet than comfort wheels, so if that's something that you are interested in and you're okay with having to replace it eventually, that might be an option for you. Also, you will have to definitely stay on top of cleaning it because uh, it can fling poop, which is not great, but I mean, some people are m way more interested in getting a wheel from the pet store than they are anywhere else, so it's up to you. I want to go back to heating just for a second uh, to mention that every hedgehog needs a thermometer in their cage. Again, they need to stay between 72 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which means you need to know that they are staying between 72 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And the only way to do that is with a thermometer. Now, I use a reptile thermometer. Uh, to, it's a ZooMed one. It's behind you guys. Um, I use a ZooMed one. It has a little probe that I can put where I want and then I can leave the little readout where it's easy for me to read. Um, you can also just find ones that like stick to the wall uh, at like Walmart and you can stick it in the cage. It's up to you what kind of thermometer you use, but you definitely want a thermometer inside the cage. You cannot rely on your house's thermostat to tell you how warm or cold it is in a specific spot of your house. So you need a thermometer. It's one of it's also one of the 
most important things in a hedgehog's cage. I keep saying they're all important because they all are. Yeah, they all are. Now you are also going to need food. I am not going to talk about diets that much in this video because I just did an updated diet video. So I'll link that down below and hopefully I will remember to put all of this in the cards for you guys as well. So uh, it'll be easier to click and find. But if not, it'll all be in the description. Tons of links to more specific information. It'll, it'll be down there. So you're going to need your food, and to put the food in, you're going to need bowls. Heavy ceramic bowls are your best bet. Um, you can use a bowl or a water bottle, as long as the water bottle is not spring-loaded, um, for water, that is. And then, again, the food bowl, it should be heavy ceramic. They will tip it if it's not. Or you can use something like a stable if you have room for it in your cage. You know, you know it's raining right now. Do you hear this rain? This is ridiculous. So let's talk about hides. What type of hides you buy is totally up to you. You can buy plastic igloos if you want, or you can buy cozy items from Etsy. I personally use a lot of cozy items, um, and they are from the seller Whim So Cool, who I will link down below. If you guys have seen any of my cages, you know that I use them a whole lot. I've got, here, look, ready? You see those cozies in there? You see those cozies down there? Those are all from Winsaw Cool. And I'll just mess up my camera. What you use as a hide is totally up to you as long as it's big enough. My favorite things to use are cozy items because they're soft and squishy and because I use fleece. But also, PVC pipes are good. Igloos are fine. I mean, what you use is totally up to you as long as you have a hide. Now, the bigger your cage, the more hides you need because hedgehogs are prey animals and they need their cage to be cramped. Not cramped as in small, but cramped as in like Cluttered. Clutter is a better word. They need to have a lot of stuff. Uh, there shouldn't be big open spaces because they're not going to want to run through them. Now, let's talk about hygiene and grooming. Hedgehogs need one wash or shampoo. I currently use the Hedgehogs and Friends hog wash. I used to use a baby wash that I'll put a picture of somewhere. And then we'll need nail clippers. You can use a toothbrush for the soap as well if you want. Um, but those are the two big things. I use just baby human nail clippers for my hedgehogs. They work fine. You can use small pet ones, but I don't like small pet clippers for any of my animals really. So some other fun stuff outside of the necessities that I already mentioned would be something like a litter tray that you can put underneath the wheel. Hedgehogs predominantly run on their wheels and go to the bathroom at the same time, which is uh, interesting. If you don't own hedgehogs, that's probably a weird thing. If you do own hedgehogs, you're guaranteed used to it by now. Um, but putting a wheel or putting a litter tray under the wheel can be really helpful, particularly if you have fleece. Toys are also a fun option if your hedgehog will play with them. Uh, a lot of the best toys are cat toys or children little children's toys like rubber duckies and things like that um, or crinkle balls are a big hit with a lot of hedgehogs whatever your hedgehog will play with um, TP tubes are also fun cut them down the side though so that the hedgehog doesn't get stuck uh, so if your hedgehog will play with them those are great too mine don't have any toys because they had toys for forever and they never played with them ever ever uh, Blaze would anoint with them after I'd wash them, and that's only because he could smell the soap. So, a carrier is also really important. I like hard sided carriers for traveling um, because they are much safer in the car. For things around the house, I like bonding bags. I buy all of my bonding bags from Whim So Cool again, and those are loads of fun to use for bonding within the house because you can carry your hedgehog around. Um, when you're doing things, if you're busy and you don't have time to like actively handle them, that's great. Sometimes I will pop one of the hedgehogs in a bag and go do the dishes or the laundry or whatever. So I'm getting stuff done while also socializing the hedgehog. You'll need something to clean the cage with. Uh, I just use vinegar and water. You can use a specific pet cleaner. No household cleaners in the cages. Like nothing like Windex, you know? 
uh, it has to be natural and digestible. Treats are something fun to have on hand. I usually use insects or people food for treats. I will link a treats list down below if you want to keep them on hand. Add them to your supply list. And one of the last things I want to mention to you guys is sort of emergency supplies. You can have a whole bunch of emergency supplies on hand for your hedgehog, but the number one thing I want to recommend to you is hand warmers. Now, if you live in a cold climate, you've probably seen those before. Uh, they sell them at like gas stations and convenience stores and all over the place, and they're just little hand warmers that you shake up and they heat up, and those are great for traveling in the winter or if your power goes out, which happens a lot here because we get storms like this all the time. Um, so yeah, just keeping those on hand for just in case is really, really, really important. If you do happen to live in a cold climate, you can probably find these all over the place. If you don't, or you just don't want to go to the store, they are widely available online. I get mine off of Amazon in bulk. So I think that's the main things I wanted to mention to you guys. Uh, if I'm missing anything, you can always check out my old video, which was loaded full of stuff, just a little... A little on the boring side. Lots of information, but maybe just play it in the background. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had a lot of fun filming this, even though it's storming. Hopefully this was helpful and a little more entertaining than my old video, and uh, sorry you didn't get to see any hedgehogs. But uh, check out some of my other videos. They have hedgehogs in them. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you all in my next video.